It's often said that barristers or trial attorneys are actually frustrated actors. But it turns out an awful lot of them are frustrated authors who've done something highly successful about it. Robert Degoni is a classic example. He's a brilliant, brilliant writer, very charming guy, and I'm sure he's going to have a lot to say. Learn the craft. Uh, you know, it sounds, it sounds uh, pedantic, but it's true. I mean, uh, I could always write, but my trouble in getting my novels uh, bought was that I didn't know the craft. So I would say, start with the craft, go to conferences, uh, find out what people are reading, what books they're reading, and learn the craft. The Extraordinary Life of Sam Hill came out in April 2018. And I think that's my opus. That's that book that uh, every author has inside of them that they want to write. And uh, I wrote the first draft in five weeks. And I finished the book in 10 years. Uh, it's just was one of those books that uh, it's a story of a young, young boy who's born with ocular albinism, which means he has red eyes. And uh, his mother's a devout Catholic and wants him to go to Catholic school. And it's about the story of his life. He's bullied. He's bullied in school, and it just touches on a number of sort of contemporary topics. Um, and I started it really as a gift for my mom, who's a avid, avid reader. And um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just so pleased after 10 years that it is out and it's doing very well, and it's, uh, it's from my heart. I would say within the first three pages. I mean, that's a terrible you know, thing to say uh, because writers work you know, so hard and, and, and putting stuff together. I will usually give a book more time than that, but three pages, I can tell the voice. And, and that's really what captures me. Is this, is this voice uh, something that I want to be a part of for the next 400 pages? Uh, and if it's not, then I, I will put a book down because there's so many good books out there to read. I keep an office outside the home. Uh, I was a lawyer for 15 years in San Francisco and I was used to going someplace to write. I was used to going someplace to go to work. So uh, in Seattle, I keep an office outside of my house and I, I go down there. It's, I rent it from a group of guys that I know that I'm friends with. And it gives me the ability to have some privacy, to have uh, as much quiet as I need, but also then it gives me the ability to, um, to go and screw around and play ping pong with these guys and have lunch with them and have some social interaction. I grew up reading books like um, A Prayer for Owen Meany by John Irving, The World According to Garp, uh, Larry McMurtry's Lonesome Dove. Um, Stephen King became a big friend of mine, not a friend, of, uh, well he did, he became a friend of mine through his books. Uh, I'm a, he, I, I love The Green Mile, uh, I, I love that book, in fact I read that book every day that I'm writing. I will, I will get up in the morning and I'll get to my desk and I'll open The Green Mile to any page and I'll just read. Um, but I really read a lot of those literary type novels. My mom was an English teacher. And so uh, I think probably to keep me busy and occupied, she would hand me books all the time. So, you know, I read The Count of Monte Cristo. I read um, Of Mice and Men, The Old Man and the Sea. And um, I just really fell in love with story. I fell in love with the characters and I fell in love with the stories. Wow, writing. <laughs> you know, I, I have this, this total fear that I need more hobbies. You know, I'm, I'm getting to an age where I feel like, God, I got, I'm supposed to have hobbies. My kids are, are gonna be out of the house in September. I'm gonna be an empty nester and my wife and I, I gotta have these hobbies. And then my wife said to me the other day, she said, you have your hobby. You do what you love, you write, you know, you're blessed. Um, I love to fish, uh, I, I love to, uh, to travel. Um, but I've come to grips with the fact that I love to write. Uh, and I get a great deal of pleasure out of it. And so I'm, you know, I'm going to be okay, I think, because as long as I can have a computer in front of me. <laughs> yes. 12, uh, 12 years old, uh, seventh grade, uh, Catholic grammar school. Had to get up and give a speech to our um, peers about uh, slavery. And I knew the moment I was standing up there, uh, I had written this piece and I was do reciting the piece like an abolitionist. And I just remember looking out at that audience and I remember thinking, this is really cool. I really like this. And uh, I 
studied journalism in high school. I was the editor of the newspaper there. I went to Stanford University, studied communications and creative writing there. And I just always something I wanted to do. It was, uh, it was, it was my passion, and I knew it from a very early age. Uh, I am a, I'm an organic writer. So I will get an idea about a book, what I want the book to be about. So for instance, I had a book that just came out in June 2018 called A Steep Price. And I had been reading about arranged marriages. In fact, I, and that started because I took an Uber. Uh, I landed at San Francisco Airport, took an Uber to go visit my mom and the driver and I were talking. It turns out he was from an arranged marriage, a young man. And so I started talking to him about it. And uh, his father and mother were arranged marriage. and. And I just found it really fascinating. So I started doing research on that topic and I started seeing how it applied to uh, Western culture and in here in the United States. And uh, I just, my stories come out of my research. And so once I get to a point where I begin to see how my characters are gonna fall in place in the story from the research I've, I've done, then I just begin. And uh, I, I do sort of a, a consequence and results thing. You know, if, if my character does one thing, there can be a number of different consequences, and I sort of play those out. Not a novel. Uh, I'm a lawyer by background, though, and I did lose some briefs. <laughs> and let me tell you, when you have a deadline, uh, that is a pretty panicky situation. I save everything and I am uh, I am uh, just o over the top about it so I get done every day on my computer and I email my home computer and my laptop my what I've done that day uh, and I, I do that every day uh, no matter where I'm working I email it to at least two other places I think more than anything I hope they can put themselves into my stories. Um, I hope they can empathize with my characters and, and become a part of the story so that they enjoy the story. Um, you know, writing thrillers, uh, it's not, the, the stories aren't always enjoyable, but if, if the reader walks away from that story um, truly entertained and their question is, what's gonna happen next? Um, Tracy Crosswhite's my main character, and, if, and when I get emails that say, what's going to happen next to Tracy Crosswhite, then I, then I feel like I've done my job. It's probably the best thing and the worst thing, which is your work is in the public. And the, the, the good thing about that, the best thing about that is uh, you, ha you can bring so much joy to so many people. And I get emails all the time from people that will tell me the most amazing things that their, my books have done for them. Um, my, your books restored f my faith. Uh, your books uh, distracted me for three hours while I was undergoing chemotherapy treatment. Uh, I'm a shut-in in Kansas City and I read 10 books a week and I love it when I can get your books. And that means so much to me. But at the same time, your books are in the public and so there's always going to be that segment of the public that that hates everything you do, uh, that hates everything that anybody does. Uh, so you really have to kind of steel yourself uh, against that and, and always look to the, to the bright side, to those bright emails that make you feel good. So in 2013, I reinvented myself and I started writing police procedurals and I wrote this book called My Sister's Grave and I came up with a character named Tracy Crosswhite and uh, Tracy is a complex individual, has a really complex background that involves her sister. And I started writing this series and people really took to it. They flocked to it and I've been writing that series ever since. So the latest book out now is called A Steep Price and it's the sixth book in the Tracy Crosswhite series. And Tracy keeps continuing on and keeps growing as a person and as a police, the Seattle police detective. So I don't want to give away any spoilers because if you start at the beginning, you'll see that she grows as a human being, she grows as a person, and she continues to, uh, to fight for justice for people that can't get it anyplace else. Thanks so much, Robert Dagoni. Great having you in the studio.